Sky News. The Iranian Foreign Minister wrapped up a three-day visit to Australia today. It's the first visit of an Iranian Foreign Minister in over a decade. And it's no mistake he was here spruiking Iran's business opportunities in the wake of the nuclear deal that's seen decade-old sanctions lifted. His visit has coincided with Russia's announcement in the last couple of days as well that it's drawing down troops in Syria. I asked Dr Zarif about what this means for Iran and the proxy war that's being waged with Saudi Arabia in Syria. As you'll see, he blames Saudi Arabia for the rise of ISIS and he refuses to admit that Bashar al-Assad has committed any crimes against his own people. Foreign Minister, thanks so much for your time. You've welcomed Russia's decision to draw down its troops in Syria. Will that affect Iran's thinking and its support for Assad? Well, uh, we never supported anybody in, in particular. We supported uh, the Syrian government, uh, which is recognized by the United Nations. Uh, we also supported a, an international fight against ISIS, which is a common threat to all of us. It requires preventing ISIS from taking over Damascus, and that has been the goal which we have achieved with uh, the sacrifices that were made by the Syrians and by uh, those who cooperated with the Syrian people in defeating uh, and preventing ISIS from taking over. Now, we insisted on a ceasefire for the past two and a half years as a first step towards political resolution because we believed from the very beginning that Syria did not have a military solution that Syria requires a political solution, but the political solution should be decided by the Syrian people. People from outside cannot impose their preconditions on the Syrian people. They should allow the Syrians to make that decision. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, uh, as far as I can see, if the Russians see ceasefire or cessation of hostilities or whatever you want to call it, holding, to the extent that they don't need to have a presence um, as strong a presence as they did in, in the past several months in Syria and they believe the ceasefire is holding, that's a good sign. But do you accept that Bashar al-Assad is a war criminal? Well, that, that is for the Syrian people to decide, not for us. Uh, the fact is that Syria has been uh, fighting uh, a very, very serious foreign-inspired, foreign-supported campaign uh, of terror, of extremism, that is a threat to all of us, not just the Syrian people. We now see that the threat of uh, extremism, ISIS, Nusra, that started in Iraq and Syria, now have expanded. People in Sydney suffered because of that. People in San Bernardino suffered because of that in the space of a year. And many people in cities in between. Paris, uh, many cities in the Middle East, Sharm el-Sheikh, Ankara, Istanbul, a lot of people, same culprits, same culprits. So you need to contain this threat, you need to control this threat, and you need to defeat it. Defeating it would require a comprehensive approach. It cannot be done militarily, it requires a military uh, angle, but it cannot be done militarily alone, it has to be done culturally, economically, educationally, politically. And we are prepared to engage with whoever is prepared to engage in this fight. You said this is uh, foreign inspired. Can I get you to expand on that? And who, as a second who armed these terrorists? Who provide them financial assistance? Who is allowing new recruits to uh, you check your own record? Saudi Arabia? Uh, well, I, I'm not going to name names. But what is important is for the international community to look carefully. What is happening? Where is the money coming from? How is the oil being sold? How the money gets back to the proceeds from the sale of oil? Get back to Syria. Where did all these sophisticated equipment come from? Maybe now you say they captured them from the government. Where did they come from in the beginning? How did they get into Syria? These are questions that need to be asked to see the threat that What's we your facing. theory? Is it Saudi Arabia? Well, my theory th is that some countries in our region, unfortunately, and some countries outside the region, considered a geostrategic necessity 
to change the government in Syria uh, or to, uh, in their view, balance Iranian influence in the region. And they engaged in this conflict, unfortunately. The cost to, uh, to them, to the Syrians, and to the international peace and security has been great. How do you see Iran's position and responsibility in the Middle East? Well, we believe we are a responsible player. We have exercised restraint against provocations by many. Uh, we were the victims of an aggression. Uh, we defended ourselves. Nobody came to our help. We will continue to defend ourselves, but we have never waged war against any country. We will never wage war against any country. But when it comes to our defense, we will uh, defend ourselves with everything we Javed Sharif Zarif is also, was also one of the major architects of the nuclear deal, this historic deal that's been struck with the United States that Israel is completely unhappy with. There's been ballistic missile testing as well over the last week, uh, and this has been to a chorus of condemnation. Stick around. After the break, we ask Javed Zarif about that, and he justifies what Iran has done in recent weeks and actually points the finger at Israel. Talk to me. We all know the time. Those who not only speak in cliches. Sometimes we just got to keep the chimp in the cage. But think in them. It's time for something cliche proof. It's time for the all new Jaguar XF. This is not business as usual. Knowledge Applied is power. Incredible things are created with the right knowledge. Knowledge also breeds foresight, giving strength to manage risk and make better decisions. When you choose to trade Forex with Go Markets, you'll gain access to our foresight and expert market analysis. Analysis that could help you identify potential financial risks and wait for the right opportunities. Go Markets, your first choice for Forex. I have been working in oral care for the last 12 years. There is a perception that whitening toothpastes are not good for people with sensitive teeth. Some are quite abrasive. What we've developed in Sensodyne True White is a breakthrough. Ten times less abrasive than many of the whitening toothpastes that are out there. And it can relieve the pain of sensitivity. It's different. There's nobody else out there that I'm aware of that has developed whitening for people with sensitivity in this way. Always say, Sergey, if you can't beat them, buy them. <laughs> Mr. Alexander, it's a Thank pleasure you. to meet you. I'm Tom. Hello. So, talk to me, Tom. Mr. Alexander, the price for health insurance will increase on average 5.6% on yeah. April 1st. Last year, oh. some policies went up by 18%. Son of a mongoose! Beat the health insurance price rise. Oh. Call us on 13 32 32 or go to comparethemarket.com.au. Discover the lingering Coco character. Where will you go with Capri Coco? What's my character's motivation for this scene? Isla, it's an ad about the orange everyday bank account. You just need to say, customers who deposit their pay of $1,000 or more every month can use every ATM in Australia for free. I know that. I'm a customer and it's great. So say it.
But how would my character say it? Your character is you, Isla Fisher. Yes, that's right. Okay. And... I'm going to need a wind oh. machine and a pony. Want to use every single ATM in Australia for free? Switch to ING Direct. How banking can be. We all love a catch up with friends, but not when the coffee hangs around afterwards. Chew extra for that just brushed clean feeling. Eat, drink, chew extra. It is too early to see if sanctions lifted in Iran has really changed the day-to-day -day lives of the Iranian people, but we know they have a long way to go. There were several questions put to Javad Zarif while he was in Australia about Iran's human rights uh, records, their history on persecuting minorities, but also when it comes to what they've done in recent weeks, testing a ballistic missile. This, it's been argued and has been backed in by Russia, that it wasn't actually uh, actually uh, affecting the agreement that is in place when it comes to the nuclear deal. But look at what Javed Sharif had to say about Israel's role in the region. We know that on one of these missiles, a scrawled down the side, Israel must be wiped out of the face of the earth. That was written in Hebrew. He didn't deny that's what was written on the side of this missile. But he turned the finger and pointed it at Israel, saying Israel must uh, answer to this. And he called on the international community to condemn that country. You were instrumental in putting together the nuclear deal. How has life changed in Iran since the lifting of those sanctions? Well, it's too early to change the day-to-day -day life in Iran because it takes time mm -hmm. for business to come back, for Iran to be able to engage, um, I mean, and, and business investments in Iran uh, will not produce results overnight. It takes time. But, but one thing has changed. People are more hopeful. You see more smiles when you walk in the streets of Tehran, and that's good enough for me. Why would you then perhaps jeopardise that with the latest testing of ballistic missiles? You say it hasn't, um, uh, it hasn't violated Section 2231, and that's the only one that remains relevant. But is it really in the spirit of the agreement? What, why? Well, yeah, it's it seen as provocative. It, it's, not, it, it's neither against the letter nor the spirit of the agreement, because the agreement was focused on nuclear weapons. We never wanted nuclear weapons, and this agreement provides for the best guarantee that money can buy that Iran will never produce nuclear weapons. So that's what we agreed. That's the letter. That's the spirit of the agreement. So all we need to do is to ensure that the agreement holds. Iran has implemented its side of the bargain, and the International Atomic Energy Agency, the nuclear watchdog, has verified it now twice. And we implemented our obligations long before the international community expected us to implement them. People were talking about May, April, May. We implemented them uh, by the beginning of, the, of 2016. So we're, we're all there. We have done all it takes to build confidence, because you will build confidence through the agreement you make. Missiles are a necessity for our defense. I've said many times, we spend a fraction of what, uh, what others in the region, almost every single state in the region, spends many times more than Iran does, in spite of the fact that we are the biggest, largest, and most powerful country. But we spend far less on defense. Now, people focus on missiles because that is the capability that we're best at. If we were producing B-2 bombers, then I'm sure people would have focused on B-2 bombers. Because there is a prejudice that Iran should not uh, be able to defend itself. Okay, and why? A and why? Did we invade any country? Did we attack any country? We have not forgotten in Iran that for eight years, Iran was being bombed. Iranian people were being gassed with chemical weapons. And nobody even condemned Iraq. In fact, everybody helped Iraq, gave it support, gave it ammunition, gave it military support, gave it money financial assistance from the west to the east and the countries in the region. So if everybody requires to be assured, if, if anybody requires to be assured, if anybody requires to be uh, given promises, it's the Iranian people. 
we should not be asked to go out of our way to stop defending our country. How do you explain, though, Israel must be wiped out, scrawled on one of these missiles? You see, the foreign policy of Iran is proclaimed and articulated by the foreign minister, the president, and the leader. We are the people responsible for articulating foreign policy, but the general, the Revolutionary Guards general, who presided over the testing of that missile, at the time of the testing, said one sentence. We will not attack any, anybody. But, but, but what about hold this on, written down the side on, of the on, missile? Because this doesn't you really see, fit in with your claim that this testing is in defense. And Israel would rightly see this as a provocation. Yes. You understand no, that? No, no, no. Let me, let me finish my sentence. I challenge Israel to, say, to make the same statement. We will not use force other than in self-defense. That's the statement that General made. Now, Israel on a daily basis threatens to use bunker busters against Iranian peaceful nuclear facilities. You know what that threat means? That threat means releasing radioactive material to the atmosphere that may cause harm, death, injury to millions of people in Iran and depending on how the wind is blowing to many countries in the region. So this and latest forget, test was a, a show of strength and that should we Israel see ourselves. it as a veiled threat? That we will defend ourselves. We will not take action against anybody but we will not allow people to threaten our people to uh, threaten us with use of even nuclear weapons. I think the international community should condemn those provocations. I think the international community should put pressure on those who are making those provocative statements that we are going to bomb Iran. I think that's wrong. Israel must be wiped out on the side of a missile is pretty provocative as well, and you are In, being condemned. Uh, wh why, uh, while at the same time we say we will not attack any country, and that is why we believe uh, these statements are uncalled for and uh, irresponsible when they are made by people who Keep quiet when Israel makes all those threats. There's around 8,000 Iranians that have not been successful in seeking asylum in Australia. You say that you will never accept their forced returns. Why not? Well, because we did not ask them to leave. They left Iran voluntarily. They left Iran with their passports. They left Iran legally. They were lured into seeking asylum in Australia. We do not believe they needed to seek asylum in Australia. Lured by, by, drug, by, by people traffickers, uh, by people smugglers, by those who advertise with Australian telephone numbers in Iranian papers that you can have a better life in Australia, that you can immigrate to Australia, make more money, in Australia, and people sell everything they have and leave Iran to build a better future for them in Australia. That's, that's a promise that we didn't give them. Somebody else gave them, and somebody else g prepared the pretext for that promise. Now, if they want to come back to Iran voluntarily, we will always accept them. We will not force them to come to Iran. Because if we were to force them to come to Iran, your human rights organizations would be the first to criticize us. So you have been uh, criticized as well over Iran's human rights record, not you personally, of course, but this has been raised with you in Australia. So if these Iranians were to return, what gu guarantees do you, do you give them that they won't be persecuted? Well, there won't be, nobody is persecuted for leaving the country. If somebody has committed a crime, and leaving the country on a passport is not a crime. If somebody has committed a crime, then we cannot give them immunity. If somebody, like the person uh, who unfortunately uh, created the mess in Sydney last year, he was a fraud. We had informed Australian government that he was a fraud. Uh, I don't know his name, but I know, I know that that was the new name that he chose for himself after being uh, influenced by ISIS ideology. Uh, but he was a fraud. He was a fraud when he was in Iran. He was a fraud here. So if he had returned to Iran, or had he returned to Iran, uh, he would have been prosecuted. 
for the crimes he committed. We're sorry that he caused so much pain here in Australia. But, but you need to be careful about the consequences of what you preach. One final question. The US election campaign, what do you make of a prospect that Donald Trump could be the next leader of the free world? Well, um, we don't consider the United States a leader of the free world. You do. But, but uh, for us to decide or to have a view about the decision that the American people will have to make uh, is not in line with our foreign policy. We do not interfere in the internal affairs of other states. We expect them not to interfere in our internal affairs. As much as we ask them, they continue to interfere in our internal affairs, but we're not going to justify what they do by repeating it. Foreign Minister, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.